Hey, it's Tom from Texas and it's time for another floppy deep dive and it's time for another of the mini faces series where tonight I'm going to be looking at one-on-one -on -one with Dr. J and Larry Bird. This was one of the first sports games I ever played on the Commodore 64. Had classic things in there like breaking the backboard and instant replays. Things you just didn't see before in a sports video game which was so cool. And of course it had Dr. J which was like the coolest in the late 70s, early 80s before Michael Jordan. Everybody loved Dr. J and wanted to be like Dr. J. And this was just one of my favorite all-time sports games and I thought it would be really cool to look at the different systems that it was made on. So we're going to look at eight different systems tonight and see what they look like, how they were different, uh, what were the differences in these different systems. So pull up a chair, grab a joystick, and let's get started. So first we're going to look at the eight systems that I played one-on-one -on -one with. And at first, this game was released in 1983 for the Apple II. So that's the original system that they made it for. Then it came over to three new systems in 1984. It went to the Atari 800, the Commodore 64, and the MS-DOS of the IBM. Then in 1985, ColecoVision released it, and also ZX Spectrum. 1986, Amiga got its own version of it. And in 1987, the last version of it was released for the Atari 7800. So that's the exact order that the one-on-one -on -one was released. And that's the exact order where you'll see the different videos on the next screen of the gameplay. Each of these systems will be in the exact same location. So now let's check out the gameplay. So now let's look at the gameplay on each one of these systems. And again, they're in the exact same order, like I said. So up at the top left, we got the Apple II, second's the Atari, third one on the top is the Commodore 64. In the middle row, we got the MS DOS on the left. We've got the Coco Vision on the far right. We've got on the bottom ZX Spectrum. In the middle there on the bottom, we have Amiga. And then the last is the Atari 7800. And you could tell just by a quick looking at these different screens that there's Definitely, definitely differences in all these systems. Some are a lot closer than others, but some are just completely way out there. And we'll look at them one on one here in a minute. But let's just on these screens look at the comparisons. You can see, um, you can see in the Atari, it has a red floor outline, and they actually kept that all the way down to the Atari 7800. Kept the red floor outline. Uh, obviously, they changed it to the wood floor. But still, for some reason, Atari likes the red outline instead of the blue like the other game systems. And then the Amiga, of course, is completely different. And it has the, the floor with the white, you know, the wood floor and so forth with the white lines. Now, let's go back up to the top where on, on the Apple, the original, what everybody was basing everything else off of. You could see that... It looks like the other ones that came out the next year followed it pretty closely. The Atari and the um, Commodore 64 and the IBM, they all look really, really similar if you look at it. Um, especially the Atari, if you made that bottom of the floor blue, it looks almost exactly the same. And the IBM looks, MS-DOS looks very, very same as the Commodore and the other ones. So they kept it pretty pretty similar in the 84. Then when it switched to uh, Coco and Spectrum, these were probably the two most way out there systems. Uh, Coco, they look like two gingerbread men battling each other. They don't even have shorts or anything. They're all the same exact color. And uh, just, just very odd. And we'll look at that more in close so you can see it better. And then of course, ZX Spectrum, it's one of a kind system. So look at that, the blue and yellow and the gray, it's just nothing else like it. It's kind of like the graphics you would see on one of your watches back in the day where you had just the, the, the different graphics, very simple or something like that would be on your game watch or 
would be on like a little handheld device or something along those lines. And then of course Amiga looks just beautiful and uh, it played really, really fast, but we'll get more into that detail when we show it up close. And finally is the Atari 7800. So definitely a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences too. So now let's look at them one on one. So here's the original, the Apple II, and it looks very similar to the, the all the other ones that came out following it. Well, most of them following it. And I liked it, except I did not like the sound because this sound here with the crowd cheering is like nails on a chalkboard to me. It is the most ridiculous sound in the world. And you have to hear it every time they score a basket. I literally wanted to poke my eardrums out. Just the fact, it just drove me insane. And I'm so glad that they fixed that in future versions because I would not been able to play this game very long with the volume up. And maybe people back then in the Apple II didn't have volume and didn't have to hear this nonsense, but listen to it. It reminds me of Dumb and Dumber when he says, you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? So anyway, that's enough of the Apple II. Let's look at the next system. So this is the Atari version. And this one, I think, looks really good. I like the red uniform on Dr. J and the white on Larry Bird. It played really well, very similar to the other systems. But you got to have this in every game. The shattering of the backboard and then getting an earful from the janitor that is just so freaking awesome and it's still cool today you still when you play this game you want to shatter that backboard and just love that about this game thought it was uh, just a nice touch and a cool feature to be able to see that even though it didn't happen all the time but it's very very cool just to be able to dunk and do that now another thing that was pretty cool about this if you look at the bottom you can see that white line at the bottom on the right and you can also see a little bit of red on the left that's their fatigue bar so most games didn't have a fatigue bar with the sports but this one they put it in there and it was actually made it more realistic and fun to play so your guy couldn't jump as high or your guy was you know not moving around as fast so it actually enhanced the gameplay another cool thing that was in this system is just the fact that you could you know turn around you had control of putting your back to the player and then drive into the basket and then also there's penalties in here so if you were cheating and hacking trying to steal the ball you would get the cheat and the hack and then instant replay it was also really cool when one of your plays was good enough where the computer thought it called it out to do an instant replay on it so that's the atari version let's move on now to the commodore 64 version so here's the good old commodore 64 version and this is the version that i played and grew up on so i compare all these different systems to this one and i just loved it the the gameplay wasn't too hard uh it, but hard enough to where it was a challenge you could get in there and do uh, basically there's different levels that you could set this on you set it to pro it does get a little bit more difficult but you can do park and rec and different different settings along those lines you can make it play it where you know you're actually playing somebody else or play the computer so they gave you lots of options of how and how you want to play and the different ways to play and I always love to be able to block behind like when they do the shot and get the thing and then of course you got your instant replay again on the Commodore 64 got your fatigue bars down at the bottom and I didn't see the fatigue bars didn't go up as fast as it did when I was playing the Atari one which just little things like that just little nuances that I just noticed different in the games overall it's a pretty much the same play you know with the buttons and so forth so they all played very very similar not a lot of differences Commodore 64 likes to do a lot of instant replays as you can see on here at least in this game they did and maybe I was just doing fancy things and they really liked it I don't know what actually triggers it to do the instant replay if it's just random 
are if it actually there's something to it that it, it, it actually pulls it up to do that I'd be interested to know how that works here's another instant replay so that's the Commodore 64 close-up version so now let's move on and look at the MS-DOS version of this game so here's the MS-DOS and it looks pretty good it's very defined kind of just like the Commodore 64 and the Atari but that was the crowd right so we're right back to just like the Apple II where when they cheer it's just ridiculous the crowd just doesn't sound like a crowd cheering <laughs> and that just drove me nuts I don't know why they did that but it is what it is and I can't play too much of this one but I just want to share this one with you because again I just can't stand that sound so let's go on to the next one the Coco version so this is the Coleco version of one on one with Dr. J and Larry Bird and immediately you could tell that when it came to making Dr. J and Larry Bird, they looked all the same color. They looked like two gingerbread men playing basketball one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, just looks ridiculous in my mind. I, I couldn't get into this one. But like the fact that, you know, it's something different to look at. If they all were exactly the same, it wouldn't make a very good video. But this is all that ColecoVision could offer back at the time. And uh, this one came out actually later than the original, the 8384. This was in 1985 when this was released. So I guess ColecoVision probably had its limitations and they couldn't get as detailed with the characters or the two players like the other ones did. Still has the fatigue bar at the bottom. Uh, playing the game was pretty simple. You, you scored almost every shot every time you go up there. Um, so so that was pretty good. Uh, the controls were a little bit different because it is ColecoVision, so you had to learn that. Now, Dr. J scoring every shot. looks like I'm playing Larry Bird here, and I'm lucky to score it all. So it was a little bit harder. The controls weren't very good and easy as it is with just a regular joystick and one button. But that's ColecoVision, so let's move on to the next one. So here's the ZX Spectrum version. It kind of looks like something like a Game & Watch or a held, handheld type uh, graphics that you would see. And I enjoyed playing it. Here's, here's their def, uh, version of the backboard. The basket just falls off and some janitor lady comes out to clean the shattered backboard. The, the basket just falling. And I kind of wonder what... Uh, over there in England who mostly had the ZX Spectrum machines what they thought of basketball or did they even follow it and did they even know who Dr. J and Larry Bird were when they were playing this game or interesting and so it just different version I liked it just because again something different to look at so it wasn't all similar the exact same this one definitely stands out with its yellow background and it's the blue and, and, the, and the characters the little sprites at the bottom just very unique version of this game so now let's look at the Amiga version now this is one of the prettier versions of the game And definitely you could tell the contrast. I love the red uniform and the Boston Celtics uniform Larry Bird's in. Uh, looks really good. But gameplay wise, I didn't think it, it, gameplay was as fun or as, as easy to just start, pick up and play as the Commodore 64 or the Atari or even the original Apple. As you can see, you still get penalties and you got your ref coming out. This game kind of played fast. and In fact, I even slowed this down a little bit because it just played, moved way too fast. It was not very, uh, it, it, the game flow was just ridiculously quick. And uh, so I had to slow it down and 
Dr. J was up, I think, scored, if you watched the whole game, over 100 points on me. It was just constantly dominating. I was terrible as Larry Bird. But like I said, I enjoyed the Commodore 64 version better than the Amigas. It looks pretty, but gameplay-wise, I'd give it a thumbs down. So last but not least is the Atari 7800. And I actually like this version of the game. It looks really good. This was the last one that came out in 1987, I believe I said in a previous uh, screenshot. And it looks like on this one to me that Larry Bird has a mustache because uh, it just, when it, when it's done in a front shot of him, don't it look like he's got a mustache? And they both have similar colors. So they both have a purple and white where Dr. J is like almost all purple and, and Larry Bird switched up a little bit as uniform. So graphics wise, everything's a little bit crazier, a little bit different uniform wise. But I like the layout. The play of it was pretty fun. It was a good speed. I uh, still had everything, the fatigue, the penalties. Uh, you could call timeout, as you could just see. And when you call a timeout, that rests your fatigue all the way, so it gets you going again. And I'm sure it was just a button that I didn't know. I was probably Dr. J, and I'm calling timeout, you know, like a minute into the game. But uh, just enjoyed playing this one. I thought it was pretty fun. So that's all the different faces of Dr. J and Larry Bird and uh, the different systems that they made it for. And had a blast playing all these games thought it was really cool to just see the differences and i enjoy doing these mini faces series where i get to play all these different games and then play all these different systems because i usually just get to see the commodore 64 that's all i saw growing up in the 80s and didn't even know these other games existed or had were, were out there to see these different versions so to be able to now play them and compare them and see what other people grew up with is just really really cool so let's get this thing wrapped up so that's it guys that's one-on-one -on -one with dr j and larry bird if you like this video please give it a thumbs up or thumbs down i appreciate all the comments anything uh any videos you might want or any video games you might like to see in the future i'm open to different suggestions but tonight it was all about dr j and larry bird and one-on-one -on -one. so until next time thank you for joining me on another floppy deep dive